in the shadows of the Colorado Rockies. Nestled amidst the picturesque town of Estes Park stands the Grand Stanley Hotel, built with opulent touches and a rich history. Its corridors echo tales of luxury, ambition, and eeriness. Freelon Oscar Stanley, a once ailing man diagnosed with tuberculosis, moved to the Estes Park region. Guided by the promises of its clean mountain air, the crispness of the atmosphere didn't just bring him physical rejuvenation but also ignited a dream. Enthralled by the serene beauty and crisp air, Stanley envisioned a sanctuary for the elite, a resort hotel unlike any other, in 1909. This dream materialized, and the Stanley Hotel opened its doors, hosting lavish parties and catering to the cream de la cream of the era. One chilly evening in 1974, a renowned writer and his wife, seeking solitude and inspiration, checked into the almost deserted hotel. That writer was none other than Stephen King. The couple was allocated room 217, a seemingly ordinary room with a vast window pane overlooking the beautiful mountain eye terrain. As night fell, the quietness of the hotel, amplified by its few occupants, became almost unnerving that night. King had a terrifying nightmare, his young son being pursued through the eerily silent corridors of the hotel by a relentless malevolent force jolted awake. Gasping for breath, the seed of the shining was sown. The vast hotel, with its echoing halls and cold, soulless rooms, became the spine-chilling Overlook Hotel in his iconic novel. But the tales of the Stanley don't just rest within the pages of a book. The hotel, it seems, has its own resident storytellers. Elizabeth Wilson, the diligent housekeeper of room 217, met with an accident in 1911, an explosion rocked the room, but she survived. Or did she merely transition to another form? Guests have spoken of their belongings mysteriously rearranging themselves or a chilling breeze, caressing them when alone in the room. The playful giggles of children echo along the fourth floor hallways, their footsteps racing back and forth. But these aren't the sounds of guests' children. These are remnants of the past when the attic of the hotel served as a domicile for female employees and their offspring in the hotel's elegant music room. A ghostly serenade often fills the air. It's believed to be Flora Stanley, Freeland's wife, forever bound to her beloved piano, playing for an audience unseen by the living, her husband. Freeland is also rumored to make occasional appearances, ensuring that his grand dream remains intact today. The Stanley Hotel stands not just as a beacon of luxury, but as a testament to the thin veil, separating the tangible from the ethereal. As night falls and the Rockies cast long shadows over the hotel, one can only wonder, is it merely the wind rustling the curtains? Or is Elizabeth making her nightly rounds in the end? The Stanley offers more than just a stay, it offers an experience, a journey through time where history and mystery intertwine in a dance as old as the hills surrounding it.